You know what? I don't have to do this. I really don't. I could just put this here, right over here. And every time this show makes me want to kill myself, I'll just add one massive groan to the counter. Here goes. <sighs> There, that's all the review this show deserves. Cause it's not gonna get any better. I know it won't. And yet, I'll keep going. Why? Because even at the face of the most grueling of tasks, a true champion of the people never backs down. No matter how much I wish to boil myself alive, I won't abandon my quest, my calling, to see this massive monstrosity of monetization with its multitude of members and malicious malarkey utterly slain. And even if it costs me my sanity, the generations that'll come after will surely remember my name. As a self-destructive cynical asshole, but still. Never give up. Never surrender. Embrace your dreams. And no matter what happens, protect your honor. As a reviewer. That's what heroes do. Oh my word! What is that? <laughs> Maybe it's got rabies! LOL fuck my life. On the first night away from home, Rosemary has a dream about her mummy dearest. It's one of those awkward writing tropes where it's painfully clear the nightmare is just a plot exposition dump. One moment it's disgustingly literal, before suddenly turning all abstract, while still retaining its symbolism on a level that even a toddler can decipher. Rosemary's mom used to be a guardian, then disappeared all of a sudden, to where nobody knows. So we get our heroine's motive, her driving desire, to hold up her mother's legacy as a guardian for confusing and never fully explained jurisdiction, while also hoping to one day reunite with her. As character motives go, this is as basic as you can get. Not bad per se, it's understandable, but it's still just a big bland nothing burger, since there really isn't anything special or interesting about Rosemary's relationship to her mother. For what little we get to see, the two of them are just a basic loving caring mother and daughter, and Rosemary wishes to be just like her mother, and never even struggles to measure up to her. There's nothing to chew, nothing to ponder, and aside from the droplets in Rosemary's eyes, there's really not even any sense of palpable loss. Rosemary is the same girl with or without her mother. The alleged loss has clearly not affected her persona in any way, which is just laziness on top of laziness. The mother is more of a MacGuffin, rather than an actual person we should care about. We as audience should be yearning for the reunion alongside the characters, but it's impossible to summon any investment when I can already picture the event, and all there can realistically be is a hug and a sup. And the enigmatic disappearance itself is just mystery box bait, and just like we've already learned from the ever-reliable Juju Abrams, mystery boxes are always filled with wonderful story developments, and never amount to pure shit in your ears, eyes and mouth. Yes, Star Wars was so bad I could taste the filth. I swear, every story element feels like the author didn't even want to write an actual story, but rather just find an excuse to shove as many female characters on screen as physically possible. Oh, wait! We're in Lingarth! What's that? We're here. Ah, okay, so that's where the animation budget went. Into this Pantene commercial. Nice. Too bad you couldn't save any for the Keepler cookies. Look at that shit. Infinite cookies. Gives me ruby flashbacks. Okay, okay, last time I rag on the visuals, I swear. Pins are on chest. After a bite of breakfast, the girls head out to explore Lingarf, looking for trouble. Finally. Perhaps the episode can begin now. Maybe we can get some actual content for a change. Some kind of stakes. Conflict. Anything. Would you look at this place? What? What? Wh why? Why are you so impressed by grapes? Do you not have grapes in Pebble? But if you don't have grapes, 
then you don't have wine. And if you don't have wine, then what the hell did your dad use to get drunk enough to be able to stick his dick in that? Twice! Seriously, why are you acting like this is the grandest sight since the Northern Lights in the dead of winter? It's just a market. There's like five people. What is so impressive here? I do not understand. What kind of shithole is your hometown if this is awe-inspiring to you? Okay, so finally, finally, finally we get something that resembles an actual conflict. Rosemary passes out with her sword and nearly decapitates this random passerby. Only it's not a random passerby, but the third member of our to-be quartet of protags, Fime. What a wacky go dig to be running into the one person who's gonna be your most vital schoolmate a day before in this huge city. What are the odds? As one might assume, Fime doesn't take kindly to the attempted manslaughter and she instantly becomes my favorite character if only for the simple fact that she tells both Rosemary and Sage off for being the dim with pumpkins that they are. Might want to watch where you swing that thing because of how it's a giant sword. It's not a giant sword. She's just shorter than you. Good job, baby crone. They say the best way to win an argument is pedantically. Now this scene fizzles out in an instant and only serves to set up some lukewarm antagonism between the girls come school well. The hostility never evolves into anything significant and just eventually fades as the series progresses, as if it was never there. So once again, all of this is a big fat waste of time. Fime could have been just as easily introduced in the following episode and nothing would change main narrative wise. All the scene accomplishes is to make Rosemary even more unlikable than she already is. She should be rueful to the 10th degree, but instead she ends up getting all pissy because Fime called her out on her bullshit. And while we are on the subject, let's take a closer gander at Rosemary. Her character that is. I already know that the bad taste Rosemary leaves in your mouth at first encounter. Get it? Bad taste? It's a spice joke. Anyway, she's lame and annoying at the beginning, but I don't think I've made it clear yet just how obnoxious she truly is. She's loud, she's foolish, she's quick to annoy, she lacks focus, her table manners are horrid, and she acts with this constant demand for attention. She's like a hyperactive puppy. And none of that is presented as character flaws for her to work on. She's just a quirky, constantly hyper girl, to an infuriating degree, not to mention dangerous. I know the sword sweating is supposed to be all hee hee, I'm so quirky, funny funny, but it's a dumb joke without a punchline. Weapon safety is not to be taken lightly. A sword is not a toy, it's a tool designed for killing. If you respect your weapon, you'll never handle it like this. Your mother should have taught you this first thing. Just imagine if Rosemary's weapon of choice was something like, let's say a handgun, and she just decided to suddenly let loose and bust some caps all around. Yeah, not so funny anymore. Nothing Rosemary does is ever wrong, not truly, as far as it is presented in the show. She never gets her comeuppance, no one truly reprimands her for her flaws, and even when some slight conflict develops between her and Sage late in the series, it's just forced drama that comes out of nowhere and makes Sage to be an overreacting bitch if anything. I know I'm jumping ahead, but take my word for it for the time being. If I tried to boil Rosemary's personality down to a single word, I would call her artificial. Nothing she does, nothing she says, nothing about her is genuine. She has no interesting philosophy or goals to differentiate her from the actual brain sludge that created her. She has no memorable lines, she's not funny, and her quote-unquote energy is utterly forced. She's just hyper, all the time, because that's how this type of shonen action-adventure pro tag is supposed to be like, right? It's just bargain bin shite. Even her desire to become a guardian doesn't stem from any kind of true sense of duty or justice, but rather from the fact that her mummy was a hashtag strong independent woman. 
and she wishes to be just like her. She clearly doesn't concern herself with the safety of others, that's for sure. There's no true vision, nothing the writer wishes to actually say with their character. There's no story. There's not really even an idea for a story. The setup for Rosemary's character, for her journey, is non-existent. And you may say that I'm being harsh, it's only the first episode after all, but I'm looking at this with the hindsight of having already seen the entire show. Nothing about Rosemary develops anywhere, not her persona, nor her quest to find her mommy dearest. There is nothing endearing about her. She is an utterly derivative, lame, empty shell of a protagonist. She is in the shit tier as far as heroines go, falling just short from the very bottom. If only by the fact that she manages to contain her self-centered existence from developing into criminal behavior. At least she isn't outright sociopathic. Or psychopathic. Or hasn't actually raped anyone. Oh, but they made sure to sneak in the most important quality of any modern female heroine. Everybody likes her instantly. And all those who don't are seen as antagonistic. Because that's how the world works, ladies. You are perfect. And if someone doesn't think so, they are evil. Great, I'll get your stuff. I like her. A line that has been never uttered in any situation by any human being in the history of ever. You can trust me, I checked. <laughs>